A bright green bamboo forest spread out at the foot of the mountain. The warm sun beat down on it, and as the sounds of bugs got further away, a cold air gradually settled over us. We hurried along a tiny path. I wonder is your, if your grandfather is okay, Madoka asked me, worried. Well, he is stubborn. He should just go to the hospital. Madoka looked at me with a perplexed look on her face. Hey, is it really okay for me to see him? I want him to meet you. I want him to feel better, so I want him to see you. I had said it numerous times before, and it was the truth. I started dating Madoka after I began university. My father had just passed away when we first met. Perhaps because of our similar circumstances, she suddenly became the most important person in my life. I grabbed her hand and squeezed it. The bamboo forest ended, and in the sudden brightness I saw a hermitage. A small hermitage with only two rooms. I heard a creaking from the other side of the sliding doors as I tried to enter from the porch. I furrowed my brow and opened the door. Grandpa greeted us with a warm smile. Are you okay? I was surprised when I heard you took a tumble. Grandpa looked at me with his single eye. He looked a mess. His complexion was awful and his skin looked like wax. Thank you for coming. Of course. If you die, I'll be left all alone in this world. Grandpa sat up and then noticed Madoka. I hadn't let him know anything about her at all yet. She's someone very important to me. This is Madoka-san. She's someone very important to me. I blushed as I said it. She also turned bright red and looked down at the ground. A smile formed on Grandpa's lips. Nice to meet you, and thank you for taking such good care of my grandson. Nice to meet you too, and Tatsuki-kun is always there to cheer me up as well. I wanted to say that that was my line, but Grandpa continued. My grandson is likely going to face some trouble soon. I hope that you can help him out when that happens. Then he closed his eyes. Madoka smiled at him. Creak, creak, creak. Again, something made a noise. But there was nothing in the room that could make such a sound. Grandpa drank some of the medicine that was sitting on the ground and then sighed. Don't push yourself too hard. We're worried about you, you know. That's right. We'll be here for a little while as well. A smile lit up Grandpa's face. I was glad that Madoka came as well. We put out two futons in the next room and finally laid down to rest. Grandpa fell asleep again soon after we arrived. He really didn't look to be in the best health. I'm glad your grandfather seems so kind, Madoka said happily, looking straight at me. I'm relieved too. It's a load off my shoulders. It's sad we couldn't show him the face of his great-grandchild, though. She raised her eyebrows as though joking. Um. Um, well, I haven't really thought that far ahead. You haven't? But... That was why I came here. She looked at me through mean-spirited, upturned eyes. Creak, creak, creak. Something echoed in the next room again. Some type of creaking sound. What was that? Don't try to fool me. No, I'm serious. Well, I did want to know what it was too. Did she hear it as well, then? Come to think of it, it kind of sounded like a spring being coiled up. 
It sounded a lot like that time he was learning to make dolls when he looked after me as a kid. But it certainly didn't sound that loud. On top of that, Grandpa kept coughing as well. Rush over and check on him. I rushed over and opened the sliding doors. Bright red blood spread out over his bed, and he was covering his mouth with his hand. Grandpa, I'll call an ambulance, okay? No. It was the first time he'd ever spoken to me so strongly before. I froze. He grabbed a book bound in Japanese style by his pillow and then handed it to me. The title said, Book of Heavenly Old Men. Creak, creak, creak. That sound was coming from his chest. No matter what, I have to give this to you. I was lost in his words. And this. Then he put his finger in his one remaining eye and removed it without a single groan of pain. In the palm of his hand sat an exquisite crystal handiwork. Ooh! Madoka let out a sound almost like a scream. I grabbed the crystal eye. I took the eye from Grandpa. It was still warm. I never thought this time would come so soon. His voice was different. Liquid dripped off the end of his finger. The flesh of his throat was melting away. There was a device made of numerous small strings shaped like a pitcher plant that the voice came from, and it melted with the flesh and then fell apart. So that you don't lose what's important to you, use this. He no longer looked like my grandfather anymore. Shoulda, shoulda, shoulda. The springs lost all power and fell to the floor. The only thing left was hollow bones. Grandpa! I reached out for him. When I tried to touch him, the bones collapsed into dust. I screamed without a voice. Ah! Ah! Madoka stood frozen on the spot, but my heart felt like it was going to tear apart. Ah! I clenched my fist and screamed wordlessly again. Using human bones only construct new people. Other than human bones... The only things that exist in this world are death and pain. Therefore, in my loneliness I stray from the path and seek a friend in the shape of a human. The opening words of the Book of Heavenly Old Men This came from a famous passage in which Saigyo Hyoshi, while training on Mount Takono, gathered human bones and used them to create a human being but all it did was create a monster without a soul. As I continued reading, it seemed the book detailed the method of creating a human. The method of creating a human. The next morning, we dug Grandpa's grave in the garden. I was less concerned about the strange things that happened than I was about the sadness I felt, so I couldn't think about it very much. But once we were done burying his body... I was finally pulled back to reality. What on earth was that? Madoka put her hands together in prayer before Grandpa's grave. She had to have seen it too. I spoke to her. Things have calmed down now. Things have calmed down now. Thanks. She looked up at me and shook her head a little. Not at all. You're the one who's having a hard time here, not me. I looked down and gave a small nod. I think I'll stay here for a bit. I need to mourn Grandpa, and also... Madoka smiled. I thought you'd say that. I'll join you. Then we put Grandpa's grave behind us. We still hadn't put Grandpa's bed away. The blood he threw up had faded a lot, and... 
clearly wasn't normal blood. Madoka then appeared with some cleaning equipment. She was full of energy. Come on, I'll clean up, so you put that bed away. I left the cleaning to her and decided to burn the bedding in the garden. Grandpa. I had aired this bedding out for him. I keenly felt another part of him disappear. I'm done cleaning. I'm going to head into town and do some shopping, Madoka said, and as I came back to my senses, she handed me the Book of Heavenly Old Men. Here. This is important, isn't it? Thanks. I asked her to pick up a few things, and then I started reading the book as I kept watch. It listed the techniques, failures, and successes of several generations of the court's attempts to create people. Why did Grandpa melt away? I continued reading and found a passage that seemed to talk about just that. Once it became clear that a person was created, the spell fell apart, and both the creator and their creation would melt into nothing. The art of reviving the dead. It was a spell to revive those who had already passed. However, even if you revived the body, it didn't mean the same would happen for the soul. When Saigyo Hoshi carried out the art of reviving the dead, he lit incense to ward away evil, so the doll was unable to gain a soul. But if he didn't, then evil would fill it, so in the end, it was a monster either way. If there was no soul, then there was no person. But my grandfather was definitely a person. I read a little further and found a note. It was my grandfather's handwriting. The child will be turning seven soon. I have to give him a new body. The child. The child. Everything started to fade. I closed the book and turned to the storehouse in the back. When I was younger, I was strictly forbidden from entering that storehouse. I opened the heavy metal door to the storehouse. My grandfather worked in the front while there were various things stacked up in the rear. I moved aside the dusty items and found the entrance to the storehouse's Japanese room. Maybe there was some secret hidden in there. I reached for the door with trembling hands, then unlocked it. There were several wooden boxes, some piled up and some leaning against the walls. They were all sizes, from small to roughly the size of a coffin. I opened one of the boxes. It was full of bones, no, animal fossils, the type that was used in Chinese medicine. Was this used to create the dolls? I opened another, and whale bones were neatly lined up inside. These were the things they used in springs. Maybe I was running away. I was naturally avoiding the large box. Even though if I didn't open it, I wouldn't find the truth. I braced myself and then opened the box leaning against the wall. My seven-year-old self was inside. Madoka was back when I returned and preparing food. It smelt great. What's wrong? You seem even less well than this morning. She looked at me, worried. So it was showing on my face then. I was trying to hide it, but seemed I couldn't. I thought about how to answer her. Cover it up. No, I was just looking through the storehouse, and so I'm a bit tired. She looked at me strangely, and then she quickly smiled. All right, take a break then. I'll make something tasty for you. Her eyes were so kind. My exhaustion always disappeared whenever I looked at her smiling face. Thanks. I went back to the veranda and opened the Book of Heavenly Old Men. 
The people I create are either ill-tempered or scream with horrifying voices. If a stranger saw them, they would only think of them monsters. But either way, the people I create are undoubtedly alive. They are alive, but they are without a soul. A soul. Did I have one? Did having a soul make you human? What about me? After thinking it over for a while, Madoka called for me. On the table was a simple meal and some fried fish. This is something I can cook, so eat up. Thanks, let's eat. With each mouthful, I chewed carefully and savoured it. Madoka watched me, smiling. Is it good? It's real good, seriously. Then she burst into a bright smile, like a sunflower in the middle of summer. Heh, really? You'll make me blush. I wonder if I could become a proper lady. I've no doubt you could. But, sadly, she couldn't spend that time with me. It's like we're newlyweds, huh? I was happy. I was honestly happy she was there with me. What should I do? Force myself to act cheerfully. Come to think of it, yeah. <laughs> I laughed, but the sound was dry. Madoka seemed to have noticed, but she laughed with me. I really like you, Madoka. I wanted to say those words out loud. But if I tried, I'd just end up crying, so I couldn't. I didn't know how she was taking everything in. Maybe she just thought I was shaken because of my grandfather's death and the strange things that happened. But then she said, I'm here for you, okay? All I could do was nod. Large clouds started to spread throughout the sky after dinner. Thunder rumbled in the distance and fat raindrops began to fall. I quietly watched everything unfold past the garden. Madoka came and stood next to me. Hey, what type of person was your grandfather? She suddenly asked. He was kind but stubborn and very tough on himself. He inherited his work as a doll maker from a long, famous line and he carried that work out with integrity. I loved him. Dirt kicked up in the garden as more rain fell. I couldn't stop the tears from flowing. He sounds like a great person. Of course he was. He was your grandfather. I wonder if he was human. Well, he raised you, my beloved Tatsuki-kun. Even if he was a doll, he was still a human with a heart. I wonder if dolls can have a heart too. Madoka remained silent for a moment. Then she spoke slower than usual clearly enunciating each part. People are people, because that's the shape they are. If a doll is also shaped like a person, and that doll has a heart inside, then it's no doubt a person as well. Yeah, maybe you're right. How happy I would be if that were true. The sun went down and we decided to rest. It was cool and yet I couldn't sleep. There was the shock I experienced during the day, but something about my body just didn't feel right. People cannot create other people. They can only create dolls. The first passage of the Chronicle of Heavenly Old Men. So then, what did that make me? What happened to the soul of a doll once it died? But that was the same for people too. That thought kept running through my head. The cries of insects were quiet after the rain, but in the small hours of the morning, they gradually got louder. Normally, this sound would be comforting, but now it was painful. But amongst the insects' cries, I heard something else. At first, I thought I was just imagining it, but as I listened closer, I was sure of it. 
It was coming from deep inside me. I sat up and looked at Madoka next to me. She was sleeping well. I grabbed the book of heavenly old men and started reading beneath the moonlight. The lifespan of a doll depends on how it was made. They may melt once their secret has been discovered. The springs may break with the natural lifespan of the materials made to create them, and if you fail to make the necessary adjustments, the mechanism may fall apart. This may also occur if their secret remains unknown, yet there are suspicions, which will again shorten their lifespan. That grinding sound coming from Grandpa, was that the sound of his mechanisms falling apart? So then, what about me? No, I wasn't falling apart yet. For some reason, that was how I felt. Was Madoka suspicious? Was Madoka suspicious of me? But I'd only just learnt about this myself, and I hadn't done anything to make her suspicious. Or did she understand how unsettled I was? I didn't want to die, nor did I want to die like that. That was no doubt why Grandpa handed me this book. I desperately flicked through the pages. Was there some way to adjust myself? Come to think of it, Grandpa took some sort of medicine when we arrived, but he already put that away somewhere. I had to figure out how that medicine was made, no matter the cost. I was resolute. What's wrong? Madoka had woken up. It's nothing. I acted cool and got back into bed. I prayed she couldn't hear the sound coming from my chest. Maybe she could already hear it. But what would I do if she actually did? Even after I closed my eyes, sleep did not come to save me. I started investigating immediately the next morning, but several days passed without me learning anything. My body was already starting to show signs of failure too. My eyes refused to focus, and sometimes my fingers went numb. But still, I never stopped looking through that book. To stop meant to die. It also meant I'd break, huh? Worried, Madoka said, you don't need to keep at it this much. But I was out of time. I shook my head. Creak, creak, creak. Each time I heard that sound, my heart twisted in pain. No, perhaps I didn't even have a heart at all. Hey, is there anything I can do to help? What she said made me happy, but if she read the book, then she'd know that I was a doll. What on earth should I do? Look into it myself. I'm sorry, could you let me look into it myself for a little bit longer? I had to keep her at arm's length for a bit. As long as she didn't know the real reason why, then she wouldn't suspect anything. Could I dispel her suspicions? No, it was likely too late for that now. No doubt they were getting stronger with the weakness of my body and my attachment to this book. So then, did that mean the only thing I could do was kill her? There was no way I could do that. It would be better if she just didn't like me at all anymore. But to lose her smile would be more painful for me than death. Am I in the way? She said quietly with a laugh. She was desperately keeping tears back. Maybe I'm no help at all. I clenched my fist. I couldn't even put any power into that anymore. I had to say something. You being here is more than enough. You being here is more than enough for me. I spouted each word as if bringing something into reality. I love you, honestly, from the bottom of my heart. Madoka looked at me with sad yet gentle eyes. As I looked into her eyes, it crossed my mind that she knew I wasn't really human. But I can't say the same. 
I couldn't stand it any longer. Staggering, I stood up and went outside. I didn't have anywhere in mind. I just started walking towards the mountain. If I was in good health, that walk would only take five minutes, but it was like I'd become an infant again. It seemed so far away. I honestly wished I could return to that time, back when I didn't know anything. Exhausted, I slumped in the bamboo forest. The creaking sound in my chest was even louder than before. I didn't have much longer to live. Come on. Next thing I knew, Madoka had come to get me. Let's go back. I reached up and grabbed her hand. I'd never forget that gentle hand for the rest of my life. A few days later, I let out a sigh of relief. I found a way to make that medicine in the Book of Heavenly Old Men. But by this point, I'd lost so much strength it was difficult to even stand up. I asked Madoka to buy the ingredients necessary. She smiled like it was about to burst off her face. I was having trouble, sure, but no doubt she was as well. I handed her the note, and Madoka happily set out for town. Left alone in the mountains, the sound in my chest sounded even louder than usual. Even with the medicine, it was unlikely I'd ever return to normal again. That was how I felt. It seemed that Madoka had started to understand what was going on with me too. But I couldn't help but worry. Would the medicine be enough to prolong my life? But I couldn't imagine how long I'd be able to survive without my body melting too. In a worst case scenario, I might have to kill her. Kill? I'd lose her myself on top of committing a crime? But strangely, losing her didn't feel real. Yeah, there was no way I could lose her. I just couldn't. I'd kill her, then bring her back to life. As a doll. We'd share in the same secret, and then we'd never be apart again. A relationship far deeper than that of lovers. That idea felt like sweet temptation. Madoka didn't get back from buying the stuff necessary for the medicine until the sun was already starting to set. I bought what you said. I hope this will help you get better. It sure took a while, huh? Because I had to look for all this strange stuff. Look! She happily handed over what she bought and then started getting dinner ready. If my body were normal, then that would honestly be such a happy sight. I wanted to maintain that however I could. I quickly put the ingredients together and then took the medicine. Strangely, all my energy returned and the sound of the spring in my chest disappeared. I was so happy I almost jumped for joy. I couldn't stop smiling throughout the entirety of dinner. But then Madoka said with a slightly sad smile, I think I'm going to return home for a bit. My mother is no doubt worried. It was true, quite some time had passed since we came out here. It wasn't strange for her to suggest that. All I could do was nod in agreement. I'll be back before long, she continued. I wanted to believe that was true. Several days passed, and I felt much, much better. If I could keep things quiet like this, then I'd be able to live a relaxed life again. But the reality was that it wasn't just the two of us. If Madoka spoke of what happened out here, then what would happen? Even with this medicine, it might not be possible to stop my body from melting. I looked at Madoka sleeping next to me. She looked peaceful. I gently put my hands around her neck. I could feel her pulse beating. It was so warm. I then squeezed her thin neck with all my might. Her eyes flung open. I continued squeezing and squeezing. Why? I could feel the vibrations of her voice through my hands, but still I didn't stop squeezing. Just relax and die. 
I'll bring you back to life right away. You'll be together with me always. She looked at me with despair in her eyes, and as she struggled desperately for air, tears escaped her eyes and drool fell from her mouth. She scratched desperately at my hands, but both of my hands went strangely stiff, and I overcame her last moments. A few minutes later, Madoka stopped moving. But still, I didn't try to let go. And now, you're mine. I could feel the heat gradually leaving her body through my hands. Even after I relaxed, my hands remained clenched, and for a moment I was unable to let go of her. In order to turn her into a doll, no, to bring her back to life, I intended to remove the necessary parts from her, but if I got to work, then I wouldn't be able to see her again. And that was sad. After thinking it over, I decided to make a death mask. Plaster had to be pressed onto her dead face in order to make the doll, but the look of pain on her face now wasn't suitable for the Madoka who always watched out for me. I used my finger to try to make a smile on her dead face, but I just couldn't recreate that smile that always gave me life, and so I left it just like that. I'd be able to see her actual smile once she came back to life anyway. I took her death mask and set about my work. It was already winter. It was hard work creating a doll, but I worked hard on Madoka's death mask and was able to push through it. I pushed my way through the bamboo forest and ended up at the wild fields at the foot of the mountain. The only things there were the dried pampas grass still standing up, regular wild grass that blew down in the wind, and a small amount of lingering snow. In the middle of the field stood the mountain of hay I'd created. The doll I had created lay inside of that. All that was left was to set fire to it, and then the spell would be complete. Soon she would come back to life. I lit the match and tossed it into the hay. In an instant, everything before me went up in flames and danced in the sky. The fire grew, burning large enough to almost burn the sky. Then I tossed the death mask I brought with me into the flames as well. It no longer had any use. I turned my back to the flames. The fire burned for two hours before petering out. White plumes of smoke floated up into the sky. As I carefully parted the ashes, strangely, I uncovered Madoka's beautiful smiling face. I smiled back before I could stop myself. The last six months without her really had been lonely. I'd never let her leave my side again. Let's stay together until the springs inside us stop functioning. Yeah. Tears rolled down my cheeks. But then an arm suddenly shot out of the ashes and squeezed tightly around my neck. Using that momentum, Madoka stood up and pushed me into the ground. Why? Madoka was still smiling. Her hand squeezed and tightened around my neck. Why did you kill me? Then her face split. Behind it was her real face, twisted with hatred and glaring daggers at me. Creak, creak, creak. Again I heard that sound. Part of it was coming from my chest, part of it from hers. And then I was enveloped in darkness. <laughs>